All right, so Nana, episode 15. Let's go. I'm very excited for... I really hope this is a concert episode, guys. I don't know how much longer I can take um, the stress and just frustrations of the Nana Shoji relationship. So praying that this gets us to the concert episode. Mm. Yeah, I mean, we already know that, right? I think that's, uh, was essentially introduced, uh, in, I think it was episode two, when we learn about, like, Nana, Mr. Asano, and all of that, I think, um, it's very clear, like, her desire to be loved is, like, such a strong part of her character, um, so, yeah, I mean, glad they're, you know, keeping that, keeping that thread going. Done it. I haven't listened to the intro in a while because I was just so eager to get to the rest of the episode. But, but I think this intro is actually a bit more prevalent in this upcoming episode because I'm assuming it's the concert episode. So it's actually nice to see Nana performing on stage. Okay. All right, let's go. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's Kyosuke. See, I knew I still liked Kyosuke because he's like, why would you do that? Like, that was my question the entire time. So I'm glad he has some sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Someone uh, understands. Oh, awkward. <laughs> right, it's like obvious. <laughs> Wait, I was gonna say he literally. Yeah. Wait. Is this like a meta like a meta joke? Our entire audience hates you? Cause there's nothing in universe that she could be like referring to by like our like our audience. Honestly, Junka, you're on the list too, so yeah, just leave her alone at this point. It's a selfish, selfish act just to ease his guilt. Dude, me, me and Kyosuke, we're always on the same page. <laughs> Yeah, he really should. It's for Sachiko's birthday, right? I was wondering. I was like, that doesn't seem like his style. I was gonna say, I knew it was her birthday. Ugh. He's so thoughtful for her, but like. <laughs> Thank God he's like giving her shit. Oh, is she still gonna talk to you? Oh my God. Oh my god, okay, the like, <laughs> like breaking the fourth wall is so funny. Ah, uh, okay. Thank god. I was also like, ugh, am I gonna have to cancel Kiyosuke? But I love that he is exact, essentially parroting everything that I said last episode, 
timing was bad why are you lecturing her she's literally heartbroken she's literally like in a very fragile state like what were you thinking like i'm glad he's giving her shit and also like not letting up on it you know so it's crazy the junko really thinks that she can just show up and just kind of pretend that that whole conversation didn't happen and still go to nana's concert personally I would ban her from the apartment. I feel like if Nana knew, like Nana O heard about that whole conversation, she would have been like, that girl's not your, like she would be, she would be essentially saying what I would say. <laughs> oh. Well, I guess she's more forgiving than I am. あ、私別に取らねつ興味ないし。なんだ、同じこと言うんだよね。近い状態から面倒くさいとか言ってたし。どう言ってどこでやるの?イデアホール。イデアホールって俺。ああ。ああ、cuz she I don't know why it's kind of maybe disturbing me a little bit that Nana seems to have like recovered so quickly. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's a good thing, but I don't know. Like, I wonder what her true, like, like she's at the very least portraying herself, like very bubbly, very happy, very excited. Um, but I wonder like what her true kind of inner dialogue is because I don't know I don't know how many days it's been since uh the incident but I don't know this does feel quick and so I wonder if she's just kind of putting on a show a little bit I'm not sure I don't know <laughs> Shut up! Oh my god, that's so annoying. They're... Right. Exactly. Okay, okay. I'm glad we're seeing, like, you know, the, the impact on Nana. Because at first I was like, if this is going to be her attitude, like you know, for all the subsequent episodes, like, it'll kind of feel a bit, like, hollow. Because I'm like, I was emotionally tormented for those two episodes, and if Nana isn't after that, like, it would feel, it would feel a bit wrong, you know? Um, but okay, so she, clearly it has impacted her. Um, but she's still, you know, kind of using her bubbly personality and, and you know making the best of it but uh but yeah that's still clearly present so I like that they acknowledge that <laughs> or you know maybe this is part of her growth um um wait wait um, <laughs> wait, hold on. I don't think this is a good thing, Nana. Because it's essentially, she's just transferring all of her, I don't know, relationship energy to Nana. And I guess it seems like now she's, uh, you know, there's like increased dependency on Nana in sort of like keeping her together and keeping her emotionally occupied or something um uh, that might be a little too much I don't know like if she means it more in the sense of like oh you know I have Nana to like support you know as a, a part of my support system um and she can you know really help me and hold me up that's one thing but her basically saying like as long as Nana's with me, I won't feel lonely. Like that still is putting her like 
emotional state on another like singular person, uh, which is not good. So yeah, we'll see how that plays out. The we're both girls, so we don't have to worry about weird feelings. I won't have any reasons to get jealous. Uh oh. Uh oh, this is bad. <laughs> oh no, this is bad. Because number one, just because you're both girls, I feel like if anything, that'll make the feelings weirder. Um... <laughs> we'll stay together forever? Oh geez, I'm scared. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> Wow. I like how the guitar player's like not even playing music. He's just like waving it. Wait, is that the girl from um their hometown? Like the fan that gave Nana, I think, she, I think she gave her like some expensive gift or something. Like, was it her ring maybe? I can't remember. You know, it's a funny thing. Um, there's this idea that like, having the appeal to like, teenage girls or just like young girls young women especially like that will give you uh like that will like sustain your fame you know like I think it's like young young girls young women like really take fandom very seriously and in a lot of ways are kind of like an invaluable asset in terms of like maintaining celebrity you know what I mean um and like this is like a clear example, you know, uh, of her passion, her enthusiasm for Blast is what's basically like re-attracting like an audience to actually come and like give them a chance. So yeah, yeah that's so exciting. Oh my gosh. Ah, Yasu, Shinichi, Nobu. Oh my god, I'm so why am I so excited? <laughs> oh they have this really like intense aura. What's a visual band? I don't know what that means. Look at Shinichi! Oh my god, I can't handle this. Oh snap! Okay, with the look. Oh snap! Oh, is Nana gonna get jealous? Oh, they're playing the song! Oh my god. Oh my god. That blazer, the striped blazer. Wait, so is this, are we already seeing like signs of jealousy from Nana? I, Cause I was thinking it would be more of like, maybe if, you know, Nana O oh, gets into a relationship or something like that. But it seems like she's already feeling something, um, not, you know, because of uh, like, a, like a relationship, but like the relationship, I guess, to her fans. That'll be interesting. I didn't consider that at all, but that's that's actually an interesting angle to like take this in. Hmm. Oh, Yasu! Oh, being left behind. Why? Oh. Wow. Her first show, she's already feeling that. Like she hasn't even, they haven't even like really grown that much in terms of popularity and Nana's already feeling like she's being left behind. That's kind of like, 
huh? Oh God, now I'm like nervous like what that means. Cause I think before all of this, Nana K was like super supportive and doing everything she can to try to find her a basis, to try to, you know, um, uh, all like basically all the things to like help kind of boost them up. She was going to their, some of their rehearsals and all of that. Um, yeah, but it's interesting that she feels already so like threatened by her, like not even her current fame, but like her potential fame, you know? Oh no. Oh, everything was already going so well with their relationship. Like I was like, ah. Well, actually it wasn't because honestly, Nana K's comments in the beginning of the episode already like kind of was a, was a portent for <laughs> something bad happening within their relationship uh, because of her like over-reliance and over-dependence. And so now I'm scared, but I, I, this is actually very unexpected. I was not, I was not at all expecting her to, f to feel this way, like immediately, you know? I'm still, I'm sorry. I'm still like annoyed that Junko's here. <laughs> it's gonna be a long time until this passes. Maybe if she like, you know, very genuine with like an apology to Nana, maybe I'll feel differently. But just seeing her, I'm like, I'm annoyed. <laughs> とにかくすげかったよ。ありがとう、京介さん、純子さん。さんづけやめようよ、ノブ。一応同い年なんだし。あ、そうなんだ。大人っぽいから安さんと同じくらいかと思ってた。ノブがが。おまいガード。ガイ
or it, I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be full on homophobia. I'm, I'm more kind of joking, but it could just be like a significant like ignorance about sexuality because like the whole like Nana shouldn't be interested in girls. Why not? I don't get it. Like, why would you think that? She very easily could. And honestly, <laughs> not that people's like personalities are tied to the sexuality, but also like kinda. And just like seeing her vibe, like her being interested in women does not feel far-fetched. So yeah, get with the program, Nana. <laughs> she like imagining that they're like hooking up. How would they? Oh my God. Again? Again? No, no, maybe this is just like a period of exploration for you. You know, maybe this is like, you know, expand your mind a bit. But that's so funny. Her being like, they're just, they're both girls. Ha how would they? It's like, I mean, there are ways. There are ways, my friend. <laughs> oh, no. Now she's back here again. <sighs> Nana. It all... <laughs> I thought, like, especially after the comments she made in the beginning of this episode, I was like, oh, like, she's going to be off of this, like man chasing you know thing that she's been doing for basically since the first episode but uh yeah no just kidding she's right back to it you don't though it's not necessary <laughs> mm -hmm. okay look at that she knows I mean, I think that was a very different situation. Yeah, don't think about him, please. Oh, wow. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Nana is so hilarious. <laughs> the like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> but kind of putting, you know, Nana's feelings around the relationship between Misato and Nana aside. That's actually really, really cool of Nana to like be as sort of like welcoming to like a fan of hers. Um, but, but I think that is something that I've heard that like some bands have done or and, and still continue to do. Like a lot of their early fans, they try to like kind of keep in contact with them and kind of keep them in the loop about things and like developments happening with the band. And so, um, yeah, but the fact that like Nana has her personal number, reached out to her, invited her kind of, uh, or more informed her of their performance and let her spend the night and all these things, like that girl's probably like losing her mind. <laughs> but that shows like a really, just like really cool appreciation, like level of appreciation um, from Nana, like to, to her fans. So that's actually really sweet. Do you have any money? <sighs> okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, this is such a cute outfit. She looks so mature, actually. Like, look at her hair, even. Very mature outfit. Also, she invested the money that her mom gave her. That's actually pretty smart. Oh, the interest is low. Oh, and she's going to see all the couples. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, 
No, don't do it. No. No, Shoji might be there. Yeah. Yes, yes. Don't do it. Saving money. Being responsible. But see, that's what I mean, the over-reliance on one person. Like, she's just kind of like, I'm just biding my time. Like, she's just, like, biding her time until, um... <gasps> that... Is that her? Wait, the angle that I'm paused at, I don't... Is it? Is it? Oh my god, it is. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> is Shoji here too? Oh my god. Ah, oh, no, I can't catch a fucking break. No, that'd be too much. Oh my god. This is... God, poor Nana. Oh, she's still here. Wait, are you gonna go home? Oh, is she viewing her similarly? Like, she's getting replaced by another young girl, woman. Oh, that's so sad. Is she saying this? Is she actually saying this out loud? Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. I thought that, I thought initially she was saying that. Oh. Okay. So, um, that was Nana, episode 15. Um, that ending. Interesting. Um, let me just go back. I, I guess there's actually a lot to talk about in this episode. Um, you know, first was, uh, <laughs> uh, first was basically, um, Yasuke and Junko running into Shoji, um, at the bar. Um, I mean, it's really, yeah, Yasuke trying basically scolding uh junko for scolding nana so i'm happy about that because she deserves that um and then it was them essentially telling shoji to just leave nana alone um that there's no it's no real value in him trying to go and like apologize to her because it's like you did what you did right like i don't know just like kind of leave it be like live and let live cut your losses y'all like you know this is sort of an irreparably damaged relationship so just leave it be because i do think if he was to try to like re-enter into her life and like i don't know apologize explain himself provide justification whatever it is i just feel like that just adds salt to the wound and it you know um will impact like the healing that she's trying to do after this uh breakup so um, so yeah, so I think it was the right call by them, um, you know, to encourage him to do that. Um, and yeah, honestly, I don't want to talk about Shoji anymore. Okay, so really the big thing this episode was um, basically really focused on exploring Nana K's relationship with Nana O now like essentially post breakup with shoji um 
you know, I, I think it really started off as Nana O, like just in general, they were having like a burgeoning and developing friendship um, while everything was good, copacetic. Uh, so that was just, you know, already kind of a positive, uh, you know, their relationship was moving in a positive direction. But I think it really, it was really big when she was essentially able to be like a support for Nana during this really difficult time. Um, you know, she just did a lot for her, like just uh, emotionally. And so I can see Nana feeling like very close to Nana O um, or Hachi <laughs> feeling really close to Nana O um, because of, because of that um and feeling like she owes her a lot you know based off of her really kind of being a you know admit like uh, as she admitted herself like a savior to her during this time but as most things with nana um most things with hachi they move to the extreme and so now it's no longer like just a simple valued friendship but now there's this like expectation for like hyper dependency um that nana has and so that is pretty concerning um you know i think it was like in her sort of internal monologue uh during that car ride with um junko and um junko and kiosuke where i'm trying to scroll to it so I can get the like you know get everything right what she said yes as long as oh wait hold on yeah so she says I already have Nana as long as Nana's with me I won't feel lonely we're both girls so I don't have to worry about weird feelings mm. and I won't have any reasons to get jealous I mean and we can calmly stay together forever. So, um, I mean, that was already like, you know, kind of very clear statement of what was to come. <laughs> uh, but I actually, to be honest, I didn't expect it to happen so quickly in this episode. Um, so yeah, so it's really kind of exploring this dynamic between Nana K and Nana O, but specifically from Nana K's side. Um, she's very because she's putting so much weight on their relationship, like, oh, we're gonna be together forever. I don't need anyone else. I need not, I only need Nana. Like, I think that's putting Nana O in a really bad position because now there's like an over-reliance on her and on that relationship. And if anything kind of goes wrong or there's any issues, like that means that it'll be that much more like devastating for Nana K. Um, because for her, it's not just a simple friendship. They're not just like roommates who are cool with each other. It's like something a lot deeper because it seems as though she's using Nana O in a way to like replace the love that she seeks typically from like romantic relationships. She's kind of just putting all of that on Nana O. Um, and so that makes the relationship especially because it seems a bit one-sided um it, it just really kind of puts it at risk and so we saw <laughs> the ramifications of that already in the same episode uh very efficient storytelling um where we essentially see that nana it's interesting right because it's like yes there was the uh everything with uh what's her name Misato. Um, yeah, so Misato. Um, so it's interesting, right? Because obviously Nana started feeling like the pangs of like uh, jealousy already, right? Um, when she, you know, met her uh, before like the band performed, she was already feeling like an inkling of something like, oh, like what's, what's going on here? Uh, like, what are these feelings that I'm feeling? Um, and so, you know, it makes sense that a lot of it was directed at Misato, but I thought it was even more interesting that it felt like she was feeling that, um, with just like 
the crowd. It wasn't just one individual who it felt like that person is like taking Nana away from her, which I mean, she did feel that and we saw, you know, that play out the rest of the episode. But like, it, more interesting to me was like, when you know, the people started coming back and started actually getting hype and you know, grooving to the music. Um, Nana, like her reaction was like, I, I feel like I'm being left behind just you know because nana uh o was getting like all of this like attention from other people and so it already felt like not even just misato but like other people other fans just um sort of the popularity the notoriety the fame is something that would potentially snatch nana o like away from her um and so her feeling like threatened by that um is just really interesting um like like i think honestly even more interesting than uh it being directed at misato um so definitely interesting to see where that leads um like <laughs> is it gonna be a situation where I don't know, there's some situation, some some opportunity that can come Nana's way that will like, you know, catapult blast beyond where they are. And Nana's gonna do something to sabotage that in order to kind of keep keep Nana to herself. Like, I don't know. Um, but it, it feels like that's kind of like the sense, that, that's at least where like Nana currently is you know like it that that is something that seems reason not reasonable but um possible um but you know we can focus on misato right um i actually sorry going back to that point i do want to i forgot to make this point but i think that is actually something that you hear about I mean, usually it's like couples more so than like friends um, where, you know, one spouse is like really supportive of the other's endeavors, whether it's, you know, art or whatever it is. Um, and it's like, objectively, they feel like, yes, I am excited for my partner to achieve success. But it isn't until they actually see that success that all of a sudden, like that support and that original sense of like kind of excitement, enthusiasm for the success of their partner kind of sours a bit and turns to like, not even resentment, but sometimes it's like fear almost. Um, so similarly, right? Like fear of like losing them or, or whatever it is. And then, you know, then that can ultimately lead to like resentment in the relationship. And so um, sad to see that the Nanas are sort of on this trajectory, but hopefully something changes to kind of get them off that path. Um, yeah, but anyway, so to Masato. Um, <laughs> this little girl, it's like, where are your parents? <laughs> Like, the fact that she is, like, first of all, how old do you have to be to, like, book a hotel in Japan? Like, I feel like in the U.S., don't you have to be 21? I think you have to be 21 in order to book a hotel. Hold on. Some do allow for 18-year-olds. Interesting. But is this girl even 18? Like, she seems younger, honestly. Um, but anyway... Yeah, the fact that she was literally willing to hop on a train, go to a different part of the country, different city, major city, from this small town, just to see a concert, you know, got a hotel, was just gonna stay there, and then I guess maybe go back the next day. Um, kind of crazy. But honestly, this girl's kind of living her dream. Like her idol, her, you know, musician that she like loves and is obsessed with and has been for years is literally like was directly invited or again informed of this uh of this performance goes 
get to be in the front row and see them handed her a rose uh she took it and like tied it onto her mic stand which is so cute um and then you know hung out with her afterwards let her spend the night at her place um i don't know where she slept so that's that is actually a bit questionable Yeah, it's a, yeah, actually it's a bit questionable. Uh, <laughs> now that I think about it a bit more. Um, but at least from her young, naive perspective, she's like living her dream. She's basically able to just like hang out and spend time with like her favorite artist. Um, so that's, so that's cool. Um, but going back, Nana, if she slept in bed with Nana, that's a bit, yeah, that's a bit much, honestly. Like, they should have just let that girl go to her hotel. Um, <laughs> because, you know, sometimes I think it's easy to ignore problematic behavior when you're talking about women being the perpetrators. And so sometimes as like a thought experiment to question if it's wrong or not. Sometimes you just have to like replace a woman with a man and then be like, all right, how do you feel about that? And if it was a man, I would not feel great about that. Uh, so yeah, that is actually a bit much, to be honest. That's a bit much. Even if they didn't do anything, um, it's still a, that's still, that's still a lot. Because ultimately, right, there is that power dynamic uh, difference. And so that is a bit, a bit questionable. So, I mean, I guess we'll see how that plays out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I do feel bad for Nana K though. I mean, like I said, it's like she shouldn't feel like, you know, possessiveness around Nana O because of course she has other people in her life and you know, she's also pursuing a career that will essentially require her to have a lot of fans, a lot of people who love her, a lot of people who are willing to do, you know, X, Y, and Z. And so she'll be getting a lot of attention. She'll get a lot of fawning. Um, and so this idea that like, you know, that, that, that Nana K or that, that any of these fans are sort of a threat to their relationship um, is not, it's just not great because <laughs> this is just going to be part of the court. Like, this is just something that's going, that's just part, that's just like the name of the game. You know what I mean? Like she will, she's a rock star or she's trying to become a rock star. Like she's going to have fans. Um, so that like possessiveness sucks. And I think what sucks about it is more about the timing more than anything, because I, and that's not to say that I don't think Nana wouldn't feel a little bit of this jealousy if it hadn't been for this whole blow up with her relationship with Shoji. But I do think that that's exacerbated it. Like, I think that's made it, that's upped the intensity, I think a bit more because you know, as we saw in that final scene, like she saw Sachiko, oh goodness. It wasn't even that she saw Sachiko, I think it was like a build up, right? It's like she woke up the next day, she had a full day, Nana O was off hanging out with uh, Misato. And so they, uh, so she was, you know, had her own thing going on. So Nana was alone, right? Didn't have any plans on that day. Uh, tried to go out and do some things on her own um, and really seemed to be just really filling the time uh, because she didn't really have anyone to do anything with. Was walking around, was seeing all the couples. And so she was just const getting constant and constant reminders about um, how she herself wasn't in a relationship and didn't really have a person. Um, we also saw a little bit of that like the night before when she was like kind of having these fantasies and was like, I'm having fantasies again. I need, I need a boyfriend. <laughs> um, 
And so it's sort of just building up, building up, building up. So like the loneliness of her day, being surrounded by couples, wanting to go to a place where she has familiarity, but knowing like, oof, there's a possibility I might run into Shoji. So she can't even like, she can't even, you know, find refuge in a place that, you know, she, she would have otherwise. Uh, and then, you know, to add, add fuel to the fire, goes to the grocery store and sees Sachiko, who's just like an embodiment of her being not good enough or her being, in her mind, not good enough, um, flawed, like unworthy of love. Um, and so of course, like that's kind of bubbling up and then she steps into her own apartment, her own house and sees her roommate hanging out with someone else and so, I mean, it makes sense, right? That that is what kind of build up into her kind of having that exclamation. Um, but that was like really bad, <laughs> like really awkward. And I was trying to say in the moment, but I kind of was caught off guard. I thought that she was saying that in her head. Like I did not realize that the things that I was hearing were coming out of her mouth. And so uh, until I saw the reaction of uh, Misato and, um, and Nana, um so yeah like I just feel bad for Nana because it's clearly she's going through things um but yeah that's just really unfortunate like her her statement about what did she say like don't oh yeah everyone's here to take away my place like that's obviously you know coming from some of the unresolved emotions and feelings around the whole shoji sachiko situation so so it so it makes sense you know but it's just yeah unfortunate for everyone involved um the part that i'm also interested in is like nana's reaction and then like future nana's statements after that um you know because nana looked really hurt by Nana's words, Nana K's words. Um, she just looked really sad. Like, and then um, Nana's comments of like, yeah, but she just looks like a scolded child. Whenever I think back to that, my heart hurts. If only I'd understood more about her. If only I had noticed how fragile Nana was. The future would surely be different, wouldn't it? Oh my God. It's like, so, so of course that is uh, foreshadowing um, in a couple ways, but foreshadowing that there will be a point where Nana K learns a bit more about Nana O's backstory. Um, and, and it seems also that it seems like there will be a, a moment coming where Nana K does something or says something to Nana O that really kind of sets her off in terms of, um, you know, kind of like speaking to her comment about her being very fragile. Um, so I really wonder what that's going to be. Like, I'm really curious. I wonder if it has something to do with Ren. <gasps> Wait, I hope. No, I don't. It's like I don't. Oh my God. Okay, I'll just share my theory. It maybe it's gonna be stupid, but I'm like, I wonder if something's gonna happen between Nana K and Ren, because in my mind, in terms of foreshadowing, it's like there's the dreams that she had about Ren handing her the tickets. Uh, there was even it kind of harkens back to like the conversation that they had where she was like, "Oh, what kind of guys are you attracted to?" Um, and basically Nana was like describing Ren and Nana kind of shared, Nana K shared that that's, you know, not really her type. Um, so it's like those two, and then this statement about how fragile Nana is, I was like, is there something gonna happen? Is it gonna be somehow related to Ren? Because my thought was like, what if, I don't know, something happens between Nana K and Ren and that really breaks Nana out, like it really hurts her because obviously, she clearly still has a lot of love and care for him. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's far-fetched. 
it feels far-fetched a little bit because it doesn't feel like Nana K would be Ren's type. But like, what are types? You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. Because that's the thing. It's like Nana K's desperation for like love and attention might dry. I don't know. I don't know. I just got to keep watching. Um, but I don't know. Anytime I hear these like final statements by this kind of like narrator Nana, it just makes me sad because I know that like the dis disillusion of their friendship is like inevitable. And I just want to know what happens. And I'm just sad that it happened because I, I do wish that their friendship could really, could really last. But, you know, there's only so much that can happen. I mean, friendships come and go for sure. Um, no matter how strong they feel in the moment. So, um, yeah. But anyway, definitely a different vibe to the episode. Not as like 100% light and fluffy as I probably need but uh it, it did the job it did the job um and so yeah uh so with that uh thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye